Good morning! It's great to be back with you after a two-week break. If you are new to my devotional channel, I just want to say welcome. Let me introduce myself. My name is Marianne. I am a, a pastor at a, a Portland metropolitan area church in Oregon, and I'm also a, an adjunct seminary professor at Western Seminary, and I'm a doctoral candidate at Gordon-Conwell, so all that to say, I love the Word of God. I feel called to minister His Word to people. Um, I've been married to my husband, Bob, for 37 years, and we have two grown sons. And I'm just passionate about helping people understand the Bible. Uh, it comes out of my own story of having a tremendous faith from the time I was a little girl, but not really knowing God's Word and understanding what it means to live in tandem with Him until I got into Bible study. You know, the Bible is the living, inspired Word of God, and God speaks to us. He speaks into our lives through His Word, and we, we know that as we open up and we read His words and we read His stories, and we understand the revelation that He reveals to us. Um, I started this video channel uh, when the pandemic began back last March. I didn't know how long it would go, but here we are almost a whole year later. And I, I started this channel specifically to minister encouragement to my community of women at River West Church. And along the way, many others have joined and enjoyed this opportunity to start the day with the Word of God and to be thinking about who He is and who we are in light of Him. And so welcome, we've done three series so far. So we started by doing the attributes of God and then the life of Jesus. And then we just finished up a series called Living by Faith in a Fractured World, where we looked at the life of David. And you can find those series um, by looking at different playlists on this channel. They're all organized by playlist. And also there's another channel called The River where I've been teaching through the Psalms. And the Psalm series and the David series paired together so beautifully these last few months. Today we're beginning a new series and it's called um, Women, Courageous Women of Faith. Now if you've been with me for a time you might be wondering where are you Marianne? I am not in my normal office. That's because we've been having a terrible ice storm these last several days and my power is out, still out. So I had to jerry-rig another space where I could uh, attach to some power and I'm in just in a different, I'm in a library. So um, I'm glad to be coming to you today. Hopefully you'll actually get this. Um, but anyway, we're starting this new series, Courageous Women of Faith. And over the next few months, we're going to look at a variety of women who, from Scripture, who, who um, really exhibited amazing courage and amazing faith as they faced a lot of challenging circumstances in their lives. And they had to choose in each moment to really trust God and they found him to be trustworthy. They found him to be faithful. So just like David in our previous series, who chose to live by faith in a fractured world, we're going to look at these courageous women who chose to trust God in the midst of their various challenges. We're going to begin with the book of Ruth. Ruth is just a small book in the Old Testament. It's only four chapters. But did you know that when Benjamin Franklin was the United States ambassador to France, he occasionally attended a very secular book club called the Infidels. And in this group, they spent most of their time, I guess, um, they, were, they were reading like literary masterpieces and talking about them. Well, on one occasion, it's said that, that Franklin went to this group and he uh, read to them the book of Ruth. He read it out loud to the other members of this group. But when he read it, he changed all the names. So no one in the group would understand that it was actually that he was reading from the Bible and he was actually reading the book of Ruth. And when he finished, they say that there was unanimous praise. Everybody loved the story so much. The men said it was one of the most beautiful stories they had ever heard. And they demanded that Franklin tell them where he came across such a amazing literary masterpiece. Well, Benjamin Franklin was delighted to, in fact, let them know it was from the Bible, the very book that they viewed with actual scorn and ridicule. Well, the book of Ruth is one of the most amazing, greatest literary masterpieces in the whole Bible. It is actually a beautiful story of romance. 
And in fact, I imagine that if we were to hear this story today, if it was to hit the cover of People magazine, the headline might say, How One Woman Found Happiness in the Arms of Her Second Husband. What a scandal, right? It's right in the Bible. Well, the book of uh, Ruth is a, a twisting tale. It actually will keep you on the edge of your seat, but it will warm your heart with old-fashioned themes of love and romance. What a perfect book to study in February. But it's also a story within a story. So it's an Old Testament picture of the spiritual reality of the Christian faith. But first, before we jump into the book of Ruth, I want us to step back and I want to show you how the story of Ruth fits into the Bible as a whole. Now, some of you have let me know that this is your very, very first Bible study since you've been joining my morning devotionals. I'm so thrilled to hear that. Thank you for being with me. And so I know for some of you, you're brand new to the Bible, and this is your first exposure to what does the Bible have to say. So let me tell you a little bit about the Bible. The Bible is a record of God's presence and his activity in human history. It's God's revelation of himself to all mankind, and it's a, an invitation to enter into a personal relationship with him. The Bible is one story from start to finish, so that's why we find unity and consistency throughout. Studying the Bible is kind of like peering down into a, a deep well of cool, fresh water. And you know it's, it's bottomless. You can't see the bottom. There's no end to understanding the depth of God's character or the intricacies of His plans and purposes. And yet, when we study the Bible, it's like, it's like drinking that fresh water from that well. We begin to, to find a quench to a thirst that we've been yearning to satisfy our entire lives. This thirst is to know God and to experience His love and His guiding presence in our lives. It's also to receive answers to some of life's most perplexing questions and to experience comfort and peace in the midst of the pain and brokenness of our lives. If the Bible were not the powerful living Word of God, it would have passed off bookshelves centuries ago, just like every other popular book. Here, I'm in a library. Every other popular book passes off bookshelves and loses interest in humanity, but not the Bible. In fact, the Bible's unlike any other book. It is the top-selling book of all time, so selling more than six billion copies when it is in paperback, and how many more are in digital format, we can't even count. Do you know, though, what makes the Bible so impactful in the lives of so many people? Well, it's God's Word. It's God's Word. It's written through the hands of 40 different authors as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 said, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Together, the Bible contains what we call 66 books, and it's divided into two sections. So the Old Testament contains the first 37 books, and then the New Testament contains the next 27 books. And when we read the Bible, it helps us know who is God and who are we in relation to Him. And it really helps us understand the world that we live in and why there's so much pain and brokenness all around us. The joy of studying the Bible, and I've been studying the Bible consistently since I was about 28 years old, and the joy of studying the Bible is that our learning is progressive, and so we begin on a journey. When we study the Bible, we begin on a journey of learning about God, and learning is progressive in the same way that our faith journey is progressive. We're on a progressive journey of trusting and believing. So the joy of studying the Bible is that we help further along or help bring maturity to that journey, just like we help bring maturity to our spiritual growth and, and, and faith. 
Imagine a, a, a sunrise that begins to glow over the horizon and it becomes brighter and brighter as it rises. And this is what happens when we study the Bible. We open God's Word, we get a little aha. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. And then pretty soon we get another little aha. And soon they become like puzzle pieces that fit together and we get a greater revelation of truth about who God is. And these, this understanding comes in layers and it builds over the years in very unique ways as we study each of the biblical accounts. So this is why I believe we should all be lifelong Bible students. There will never ever be a time when we know all there is to know about God's Word because God is infinite. He is infinite and His Word is living. And so there's a great joy in studying His Word all the days of our lives until we step from this world into His presence and see Him face to face. So the truth I want us to think about today is this. Reading the Bible as the Word of God will profoundly bless your life. And I speak that from the experience of my own life. Reading the Bible as the Word of God will profoundly bless your life. Is reading the Bible uh, a regular part of your life? Or does it have kind of a low priority? I don't know if you've heard of George Mueller, but George Mueller was a, a famous pastor and theologian, and he read the Bible hundreds and hundreds of times. And after reading the Bible through a hundred times with, with greater joy each time than the time before, he said this. He said, I look upon it as a lost day when I have not had a good time over the Word of God. He says, friends often say, I have so much to do, so many people to see, I cannot find time for scripture study. Perhaps there are not many who have more than I do to do. For more than half a century, I have never known one day when I had not more business than I could get through. For four years, I have had annually about 30,000 letters. Most of these have passed through my own hands. Then, as pastor of a church with 1,200 believers, great has been my care. Besides, I've had charge of five immense orphanages. Also, at my publishing depot, the printing and circulating of millions of tracts, books, and Bibles but I have always made it a rule to never to begin work until I've had a good season with God and His Word. The blessing I have received has been wonderful." Wow, I didn't think people in the 1800s were as busy as that, but apparently they were. So that's convicting to us. Do you believe, it really starts with this, do you believe that God has something to say to you each day through His Word? Will you join me in coming each morning and opening His Word with me and, and exploring with me what does God want to say to us today? You know, Hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us that the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So my challenge to you is this, will you seek to spend time daily in His Word as we embark on this new series? You can begin today by reading over the book of Ruth, or at least getting started on chapter one. How might you schedule a time each day, you know, come meet me, grab your coffee, open up your Bible, read ahead for a few minutes before I come on to meet you, and let's do this together. Let's open God's Word. Let's be encouraged in His truth. Let's seek to know what He wants to say to us each day. You know, will you, will you taste and see uh, if you don't also experience a blessing being in God's Word each day as I do? Let me pray for us today. Father, we're so grateful for your word. Oh Lord, thank you for leaving us your word, for giving us this living testimony of who you are and who we are in you and why our world is so broken and all the hope that you offer us in Jesus Christ. We're so grateful. We're so grateful for the perspective that we can have as we trust you. And we're grateful to learn from these amazing women, these courageous women of faith who lived in very complex times, but they learned to trust you and they were blessed. And oh Lord, we want to be blessed. So I pray that you would help us each day to be disciplined, to get up, to open your word and to start our day with ears that are tuned to your voice. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, great to be back with you. Invite a friend to join us and let's do this together. It's going to be a great couple of months studying these courageous women. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.